Uh, I would like to introduce you to, to Daniel. Um, he uh, the slowest walker in the world, uh, <laughs> and um, as well uh, an artist who uh, walks around with birds. So um, yeah, the a new uh, Saint Franciscus, I suppose that you are bringing animals and people peacefully uh, together while walking. So um, um, I'm very curious to hear more about your very rich um, uh, practice that really extends and uh, slows down and brings us uh, really with our feet on the ground on a deepening way. Uh, so um, I'll uh, listen to you now and then we go for a, a conversation all together. So, thank you very much, Gerd, for inviting me to talk to this evening to you. And um, yeah, my name is Daniel. I'm an artist from Germany, and like walking is, uh, uh, I, I, I like hiking since since I'm very young, and then I started to study art, and somehow uh, walking gets in to the art before I even knew that there are other artists, they do this a lot. So, um, but I'm gonna be, tell this a little bit more. Like I'm gonna start with a big pro project uh, that I have done like three years ago. It was a slow walk marathon. And I um, I got this idea because I, I thought this world gets more and more crazy. Everything get, gets faster and faster. There is one crisis following the, the next crisis, and um, like, and I think the way of life we have um, to to have more success, to have more money, to build higher and whatever uh, is part of the problem we have in this world. And the art world is somehow the same. We want to make bigger artworks. We want to have more success, uh, earn more money with the, the art. And, um, but by the experience of my walks and hikings, I know that my some of the most beautiful moments of my life I had when I had just a backpack on my back and I'm far away of everything. So uh, I decide I have to make an artwork that slows everything down. And I was invited to um, sculpture project uh, with many sculpture artists uh, as a performance artist and so I thought I'm gonna make a living sculpture and uh, uh, the I, I already had an idea I, I am practiced since a long time Zen Buddhism so I know this technique of uh, meditation uh, meditation of walking and uh, in this project, I started the idea of the meditation marathon, and now I'm gonna share the image. Um, I did this project three years ago, and I was walking in a speed with uh, around 100 meter per hour on on this way, and uh, that means that I needed for the marathon, for the whole marathon, I needed 60 days. And I was walking around uh, around six hours per day. And I had one day per week I, I get off, so I made a break out of it. And to make this performance, I was starting like almost one year before uh, with the training, one hour per day. and just before the project, I trained every day three hours a day because it, it's really tough to, to go in this speed. It needs a lot, lot of strains. Uh, the, the mask is going to hurt after a while. And also to be, get used to the, to the conditions, like on this day when this video was shot, it was quite high, hot. It was around 35 degrees in the sun. So, and if there was no shadow, I was completely, uh, yeah, in the sun. And uh, I had a website and I was carrying a GPS with me so people can see where they find me on, on my way. 
and like here it's the small the hiker is now on the end i arrived but so they could find me uh, always and i had a, a small camera here in my breast and this was making always a live stream of the video so the people could also following me from home so and on the beginning i thought okay this is going to be quite boring and nobody follows me just this very slow walk but i had each day 20 40 followers um like all the time so some people just uh, followed me a few minutes and some of me them just uh, followed me while they were walking to slow down so this was um interesting for me to see how many people are online in the moment so and uh, after oh sorry after a while i was getting in a, in a small city and the police was um uh how can i say they 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 closed the road for me so that i could cross it in the slow walk and in this valley where i was uh, along the river i was walking like everybody knew after a few weeks that i will come so all the newspaper were writing the tv was there and it was fascinating for me that something that is so slow gets such a lot of attention like it um, and it was also interesting that most people they saw me on the way they get really quiet like even if they were, were children and they saw me uh, walk very slowly they get very quiet and then they, after when they were far away from me they asked their parents why this man walks so slowly or so so uh, different and this was and i like in the, all the way there was nobody uh, making stupid comments or like the curator of this exhibition was a little bit worried that people come there and talk bad things about me or uh, they, that they push me away or but nothing in this way are happened this was the presentation in an exhibition and i took like i had on the end um 460 min, um, uh, hours of video material of this uh, gopro that, that i had on my breast and i took out of every uh video like every 10 minute a still so on this image you can see like even with the shadow how the time is passing the shadow is like a, a little bit like a sun clock um, and like if you have all the images next to each other you can follow all the way and you see all the difference of of the of the street and the image next to it i had a sensor that took all my data like breast uh, my 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 heartbeat how was the the what to say how fast i was uh, breathing and uh, it tells this image tells a medicine a doctor like my how my conditions are on this day if i was nervous if my um heartbeat is very fast or slow and i put this together so um you can see like there is the time that you see the nine i started at eight o'clock and i stopped at 11 o'clock so you see the heartbeat is very low so this was the time i was really in the meditation walk and when it goes the red line's very high. I was perhaps on the bicycle to the way to the place where I was walking or on the way back where I slept. So how does it come to a work like this? I want to show some older works. Um, and I have to start with Boy Scouts. Like Boy Scouts um, influenced my work perhaps more than my study at, at university because uh, with the boy scouts i was hiking when i was since i'm very young and the kind of boy scouts i was they were very romantic influenced by the german romantics so going out in the nature 
making music, sitting on the campfire and hiking a lot around and also hitchhiking. So we hitchhike all around Europe. And that's how we looked like a little bit like vagabonds or like traveling journeymans. Uh, I don't know if you know traveling journeymans. I'm going to show later an image of them. And it was having really um, cheap equipment uh, like this old army uh, backpacks and uh, just with the necessary we went around. And when I started university, after a while, uh, after the first year, I almost quit uh, art university and I decided to to do something else. And my teacher told me, Daniel, you should do art of out of what you like. And as hiking and going out to the nature was very important for me, uh, he said, do art uh, making out of hiking and of traveling around. And so I developed my first uh, art project in this time. And it was not a real art project, or I don't know. Um, I walked from the north in Germany down to the south without money for two months all the way. And actually, I wanted to ask at the doors uh, for food and to see if the Germans are helpful or if they like I lived before two years in Mexico. So I thought the Germans are not very hospitality. The hospitality in Germany is not very big. So I wanted to test it out to figure out if this re is real or it's just an imagination. And um, that's how I started on the beginning in Flensburg, high up in north of Germany. And I was really basic equipped, just a poncho against the rain. I slept under it. And that's like, like I looked on the end, like uh, some people thought I'm homeless or a vagabond or whatever. And I, in the beginning, I told the people that I do a project. And after a while, I realized they helped me all because they like this project without money. So after a while, I stopped telling the people that I'm doing an art project. And it worked out. People still helped me. They give me a lot of food and money. And it was an exciting uh, experience for me So to meet so many people. They helped me on the way. I also was sitting on the street and making some music. And sometimes I had a sign there. Then I earned more money. Uh, it's written that I walk through all the Germany and I ask for support. And sometimes I told nothing and then I earned less money. That's when I arrived in Basel. Uh, I would say this is now the first uh, artistic work. I I would say uh, it fits more in, in the rest of my work. And I bought for this work a Hugo Boss suit. And I went to the uh, Sarek National Park high up in Lapland. And I was walking in this real, it's, I think it's the loneliest area in Europe. It's, there is not even a hiking path crossing it. And I made this hike of 10 days in this Hugo Boss suit. And I was interested, interested from uh, what's happened to me if I spend uh, 1,000 euro as a student. It was a lot, a lot of money for me. And I go to an area where is nobody there who could see me in this Hugo Boss suit. And do I um, change my habits? Do I take more care and whatever? And actually, here on this last image, you could see that I really was wearing it. Um, and it was really nice because the suit doesn't have a big matter on me. It was, I arrived in nature and I wanted to have these beautiful pictures, but the rest was really like a normal hiking. So I see many of my works a little bit like collages. And this is a, a, a collage, a concept of a artwork I planned in Mongolia. I wanted to play golf in Mongolia and follow my golf ball. And always when there where I play, uh, where I shoot it, I go there and I make the next sh shot. And 
I was before in Mongolia and I really loved it. So I thought making this project and I took my images of Mongolia and I put some images from uh, from some magazines of uh, golf players and was gluing them on top. And like the Hugo Boss in the Sarek National Park is also for me somehow a collage, even if it's a, a photo documentation. I never have done this work because when I showed some friends these uh, collages, they told me that somebody has done a similar project already in Mongolia. So this happens as well. You have an, perhaps you know, you have a nice idea and you think that's a great project and then you just figure out that somebody has done something similar. Um, this is a small video. I don't know if you're gonna hear the sound of the video. For this video, I was renting a suit in the in a Hilton hotel, and um, I was arriving there with uh, four big back uh, cases full of material, and we had the permission to make an interview up there in the room. So that's why we arrived there with camera and they didn't know what we we're going to do in, in the room. And yeah, I just left on the video. But this is all real grass and it's real trees I prepared the day before to put in the cases. So now I, I don't know if you hear the sound, but I switch off uh, on some bird sounds. So on this image, you really have the imagination that I arrive in nature. And the hotel is in Frankfurt and the buildings you saw behind, it's the skyline of Frankfurt with the big banks. So I was trying to turn my back to the banks and going back to the natures and and the next morning i put all the stuff back in the cases and i asked the room service to bring it down again and they never figured out uh, what i have done in this night in the hilton but uh, so this is uh my work I have done as final exam, it's also about traveling and I, of course, I had for my final exam to travel. I built it up this truck and it was also built up with real grass and real bushes. 
and I was traveling down to Italy to Rimini. And after the Second World War, when Germany was, uh, the economy was getting better and rising, all the Germans wanted to do uh, holidays in Rimini. And they went there to to camp to do, to do camping. And in the last 50 years, like Rimini is for me an example of how tourism is uh, not should work because nowadays it's for me at least not a very beautiful city anymore. You have all these hotels and the beaches full of this um, sun protectors. I don't know the right name. So I wanted to go there and bring some nature back and um, so that we can people um, camp again in a very ironic way. And actually the Italians really love this uh, car and we never told that it's an art project. We just uh, for the people, they thought perhaps we make advertising for Saleva tent or uh, whatever, like it was very funny also go to a camping place with this small truck and open it. And this was in Venice while the BNR, uh, we stand the whole day on the last place where the bus is driving. Uh, the last work I have done on university was uh, a walk through the de desert for uh, two weeks with a surfboard and I did before also collages out of it and then I uh, this collage has also helped me to to get to found money and to explain my cameramans or the people they join me on this tour how I which images I want to have uh, the whole movie is around half an hour I could do this with the film academy uh, and I had some real professional uh, movie makers with me and actually it's a very slow movie where we, you just see me walking from the left side to the right side from uh, in the image and um, it's very uh, meditative the, the movie and but somehow things happen. For example, there was starting a sandstorm and um, I met some Bedouins and it was an uh, interesting thing. And it, it, the production was quite expensive and I get a lot of funds and sponsors and whatever. And after this movie, I thought, okay, I'm gonna start now my career as a movie maker and artist and I applied for many new scholarships and nothing happened because like when you apply for a scholarship, nobody watch a half an hour movie. And if they just watched a few minutes or a few seconds, this movie didn't work out because you have to watch really the whole half an hour to arrive there with me in the desert and to get in my rhythm and whatever. So after I finished this movie and I had the, the, the first presentation that was quite a success. Uh, I, I couldn't make any new uh, scholarships or foundings for new projects. So I decided uh, after I just get uh, cancelings and I had no money anymore to pay my bills, I decided to quit my apartment and just go like the traveling journeyman's these are the, the guys you can here see, uh, you can see here. They, uh, these are carpenters. They walk for one year and one uh, day without money through Germany and they work for accommodation and for food. And I decided to do this as an artist as well. And this was my material I had for one year. So I took a tent with me, a cooker and some clothes to go to exhibitions, to openings, but also to make walks in the mountains. And I asked some artists around me uh, if I could work for them. And if they were satisfied with my work, uh, they should recommend me to other artists. And uh, these are the 
uh, books of the artists I work with, catalogs, and you see there Pippi Lotti Wrist and Jorin de Vogt. So it was very interesting for me that I reduced everything to a minimum of a backpack and what I could carry with myself. And perhaps in this year without money and just working for uh, accommodation and food, I made more contacts than in the rest of my life because I, did, I this artist, they represent me to their galleries and to curators and whatever. So it was a very nice experience. And I asked every artist um, to make a small artwork in a book. So I have also a small collection of artworks. Now we're going to see a video about a walk in Sao Paulo. Uh, I lived for five years in, in Brazil, one year in Sao Paulo, four years in Rio de Janeiro. And for this video, I started in the center of Sao Paulo and walked out of the city. And um, for me, it was exciting, this city, because it, like it's so many worlds, like from the financial district up to the parts where the very rich people live, like here in gated communities. And then arriving on the favelas, like outside of the city. And the movie is made like a slideshow, like it's always a standing camera and you just see me passing from one side to another. And just the background is changing. And I had my bird in the, in the cage because when I was living in Sao Paulo, the, the Brazilian called me always crazy because I was walking so much around in the city and the Brazilian don't walk a lot. And also it's kind of, it can be dangerous walk in Sao Paulo. And in German we say, you have a bird when you are crazy somehow. But because of this craziness or this walking around in the city, I, I learned a lot about Sao Paulo and I uh, saw beautiful spots. So I decided to, to walk with my bird. That was the idea about this video. And what is very fantastic for me, like if you get out of Sao Paulo, direction to the sea, you have to cross the Mata Atlantico, uh, the rainforest, and like uh, 60 or 80 kilometers outside from Sao Paulo, you have still native people living in the rainforest, and they do every day still their ceremony. And the most people in Sao Paulo, they think the natives are in Amazonas far away, but it's all in a very short distance, so you have all these different ways on the short distance. And also this beautiful nature, like this monster city, like all gray, the skyscrapers, and then this really beautiful rainforest, uh, um, and it's also close together, like these are the natives, the, the children's, they... and how they live in our days. And after four days, I arrived on the sea and was letting free a bird. Now I'm going to show the last work for today. And for this work, I had the plan to sail along the coastline from Patagonia uh, northwards. And the idea was on, on, uh, to build a sailing boat uh, with wheels that could sail on the street. And uh, to tell the whole story, what's happened from this idea, 
with this collage I have done on the beginning till the end would fill up a whole presentation. Uh, but I can tell we really sailed like uh, for 200 kilometers in Patagonia with the sailboat. And like the boat was breaking down on the way there was, it was while uh, financial crisis in, in Argentina. So all the money I put there uh, to make this project, uh, I was losing. So I had so much trouble for this project. And it was a little bit like Werner Herzog's um, project when he crossed with the boat in the rainforest. Um, it was the conquest of the useless mall. I, I was dreaming so much about this project to go with my sailboat there that I forgot actually the the artistic, what will be the final result of this trip. And I had many hours of videos, like 100 or more, with beautiful images, and I tried to cut them for one year to a movie. And it's nice images, but after a few minutes, they lose some, uh, they get a little bit boring. So, uh, after all, I decided to to cut down all the material on just this image, like um, a five minutes video, where you on the beginning see just the sail on the end of the road. And go a little bit forward. There's a cut in between. And then after five minutes, the sailboat gets closer and closer. And So um, I give you just a last impression what I'm working in the moment on. It's uh, it's again a slow walk. So we um, arrive on the project on the beginning. But this time I want to collect such many data that I could teach the uh, KI, the, the, how is it, the artificial intelligence. Uh, how to meditate. So I want to train the, a robot to make a slow walk, um, making a slow walk again uh, for several weeks and collecting yeah, all the data, when I, what I'm doing when I'm nervous and whatever to teach a robot. And this is going to be perhaps a project that's going to take at least two or three, four years till I can realize it, till I find some partners, uh, they want to realize it together with me. So this is just on the beginning in the moment. Yes, uh, congratulations, uh, Daniel. This is, it's, it's, it's a journey. It's, uh, the, it's, it's extremely rich what you bring to us. And um, but, but what strikes me is that at the same time, there is a playfulness in what you do and a subversiveness and, and, and a very deepening uh, meditative uh, part, like a triangle um, where these three elements are, are connected. Uh, so, um, the, 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 I think uh, uh, that we need more playfulness um, today. <laughs> Any questions, yeah. any feedback, any um, uh, comments that you would like to share uh, with Daniel? 
Let me see. It's, yes. it's, an un, it's an unusual question, so ignore it. Um, on the radio this morning, there was a, a talk on um, quantum physics, and he talked about quantum biology and that it can extend beyond that to possibly, I thought, of quantum art. I wonder if um, um, information is physical, I'm wondering how this links. I can't think of it. It's not intertwined. I can't think of the term, but I, it's basically being able to be in two places at once. And um, it just, I don't know if that's it got any philosophical underpinning of what you're doing in any sense at all. Probably not. But So this idea of, um, as a philosophical underpinning to the act of walking, or the process of walking, rather than just a descriptive thing, i.e. you go there and you photograph it and then you show it to people and that sort of thing. I'm wondering if there's anything about um, uh, the implications of what you're doing. Implication, can can you help me with this word implication? Uh, what, what's the reason? Why, uh, not the, no, it's not what the reason is. Um, the, um, um, what, um, the consequences. You want to make people think. Yes. You want to provoke thinking. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I want to make them them thinking. Like, like when you do do a slow slow walk like this, like people think that you are cr definitely crazy. Um, but it was very interesting for me that this artwork reached even people that have no contact with art at all. Like, if you cross in a slow walk like this to. Uh, to a small city, most of the people you meet, they never talked about art. And when they ask me, why are you doing this? Then I told them usually um, that I think this world gets uh, too fast and I want to slow somehow it down. And it was very interesting that even these people, they have no connection to the art world and they don't think philosophically that they can they they really understand that we uh, that I want to slow down the world because almost everybody has the feeling that it everything is too fast there is too much press, pressure in the world so when I told them this they really start whoa great somebody comes to slow down and this is just for for the people they they are not connected to art but uh, like like in <clears throat> In the work by itself, I think there are many um, many messages of like like having all the data to uh, like we we have all these cell phones. They measure all our movements. We have these watches. We want to uh, improve everything. We want to uh, like um, the smartwatch tells you how many steps you have done and whatever. And meditation on the other side is also a kind of um, a way how you make your life better and how um, improve um, how you can concentrate more. And I mix these things together and I think there is something growing out that people um, let think about. And this, uh, this kind of works, they have so many layers that I think that everybody can find a piece um, what 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 they like. Yeah. I hope I answered your your question. <laughs> Bob. Well, just say one thing: migrating birds plug into this quantum idea. This is where they get their energy. Uh, I'm just it's it's the idea of the world, the movement on it, and um, what your why you do it. You know, not not because you don't do it to make money, you don't do it to be seen. You do it because of some inner, inner, I don't know, something. What, what's that? That's what I want to know. What's the thing in? What drives you to do it? Like, like, um, let's say, like when I start hiking, I, I, I'm. Um, I realized that really helped me to to slow down to to get an, an, another view on the world and uh, like um, I want that people at least think about um, 
or it's a mixture. I, I really like to do these projects and I like the challenges <laughs> and I, I like to, 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 to meet people and I, to, to discuss it with it. And they have this message, message behind it. And it's, um, yeah, I, I can't answer it very, like after each project, I say, say, I never will do something like this again. It's too much work. It's too much trouble. I, I always get like in financial uh, problems because um, these projects are really, really expensive. Like I produce them and I always say I do it never again. And then after a few weeks, I have a new idea and I restarted and I don't know why these ideas come up and I don't know why they have to be sometimes bigger and bigger. Perhaps I made this slow walk as well to slow down myself uh, to, to don't have like another huge project and then it becomes huge again. <laughs> I don't know. That's okay. I, I have a question. Well, I have a comment and a question. I, this was really fascinating and I love your work. Um, the first thing when you talked about um, the projects where you opened your house, you know, when you were relying on other people to open their homes to you, um, I had just a few weeks ago I had talked to somebody who had done the um, the pilgrimage of the of Santiago, but had done it not in Spain, but up in the from Switzerland down through France, and um, he was telling me about how there are people along the way because it's not as popular a route who are kind of, who actually go and they rent houses so that they can open them to the pilgrims because they know they aren't gonna do the pilgrimage, but that part of the way they're gonna be transformed by the pilgrimage is to open themselves to the people who are walking by. And I thought about that when you were showing that because there is this when you, and you were also, when you were answering Bob's question about the people that you encounter are, even if they're not gonna do this kind of moving are somehow changed by your doing it. Um, that there's something about that you have, you know, had them become more generous or become more curious or become something, even if they never leave the spot that they are. So I was very struck by that and thinking about, because I had had this earlier conversation. And I don't know if you felt that in these people that, you know, you weren't sure if you were going to have, meet that kind of generosity, but that you did and that you felt that with them. So that's that's a kind of a question. Um, mm -hmm. But my other question has to do with, um, I really loved your um, project in Sao Paulo, and especially as you moved out of the city and into the rainforest and then onto the um, ocean, the coast, without, and saying that the people in the city don't even sense that this is near to them. But then when you walk really, really slowly, how do you, did that change the way you experienced the place? I mean, when you were walking, you were walking at a sort of a normal walker's pace, but when you move very, very slowly, how does that change the way that you experience the landscape you pass through? Okay. Um, like I could see after three years, I finished three years ago, this this project, and if I would see a part of the street, I still would remember where the street is. Mm. So, <laughs> so I, I was really very focused. And I, I thought, like when I, I'm in this area and I, I know exactly how, how it looks there. So it's, I'm, I'm, like the images are really deep inside. This is one thing. And, but there are also other things like the contact to animals was really strange. Like there was a rabbit that runs through what to me and two meters before it stopped, looked up to me. And then it was making a very slow round in two meter distance around me and then it was going away. Or a fox was sitting there till I'm almost next to him. And he was watching me always, or birds were sitting next to me, and like I was no dangerous at all for for the yeah. animals anymore. Or deers in the morning were were really close to me, and this was really interesting because they knew that I'm a human, because mm -hmm. uh, but they they um, they felt the energy that there was no danger at all getting out of, uh, from my person. So this was very interesting. And um, 
to come back to the first thing, um, like when I do a project and I talk to the people, I, I think always it changed something in them. Like when, when, when you go to a house and you ask for water and you tell about a project like this, uh, and the people like it and they, op and they, they realize not everybody who has no money is a bad person. So I definitely think, um, the people get more open-minded. And I think that's a general thing about my artwork is um, people don't start to do the same things as me, but perhaps they start dreaming and to do similar things. And I think dreaming is a is a good start to 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 change things. Um, I want to make the people dream and. Many people say, "Whoa, that, that's fantastic! I would like to do the same." And uh, so I always say, "Okay, just try what what you can do." And since a while, I offering workshops that I go with people to the nature, and oh. uh, that we go with very little things, like almost no food. And I'm also a meditation teacher and a mindfulness teacher. And then I make a mixture out of slow walk, meditation, and searching the food in the nature, cooking over a fire and whatever, and sleeping under the stars. Like so many people never sleep, slept outside in the nature. That's for me such crazy because it's the most beautiful thing to look in the stars at night and whatever. And they never learned it. So I, I take them with me and when they know that I have done these artworks before and they make these courses with me, uh, they take me really serious because they know that I have all the experience and they really trust me. And that's also a nice, nice thing for me. And even in the moment, I have the feeling that when I offering these courses with the people, I can change in the people more than by an artwork by itself because an artwork you see, you, you like it. But in some days, perhaps you already have forgotten it. But if you can take the people for a longer time out there and you tell about the art you have done and then they make the, their own experiences um, for a longer time, I think that changed more. And I think Clara um, from the conference, she, she does these walks of how many, 300 kilometers every year she told me and i think that's something like uh like this is quite nice to do uh stuff like this yeah thank you jeremy hi daniel thank you so much for that um lots of stuff resonates with me um and kurt will know that anyway um there's a couple of things that I'm really interested in. Um, thinking about uh, Bergson's, uh, Henri Bergson's ideas of the durational. Do, do you know about the philosopher Henri Bergson? No, okay, that's fine. Well, I won't go too much, but he, he, he talked a lot about about um, the difference between uh, Kairos and Kronos, which is the, the Greek time. And uh, Kronos is, you know, everything by the clock. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Kairos is, is this time which goes between things. And I think that that's, to me, just seeing your work very quickly, that's what, what it speaks to me about. It, it's about the, the traversing between a moment of beginning and a moment of ending. And the, the moments that happen in between, like, like with the, with your land yacht, okay, you know that 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 having to watch that as a movie is incredibly complicated for people because people can't give that amount of time. Mm -hmm. And of I course. think, and and then relating that, this is how my heads work. Relating it back to your your you know amazing slow marathon walk, I wanted to know. <clears throat> Because obviously that was for a very data relative, and, and and how you felt that you should input that to your final exhibition, and that your heart rate seemed to be extremely high. 
for a meditative state you know i was looking at it and saying 106 107 but is your what's your resting heart rate <laughs> My, my heart rate was actually really high because it's a lot of strange you, you do in the same moment. Uh, yeah. Like, if, like it's not like sitting down. Um, but on the other side, um, <clears throat> it's, it's also um, the head gets really quiet and you really stop thinking. So you, could, you just can do a project like this when you really reduce your, your minds in, in the okay. time. And what but is wait. interesting <clears throat> about the dates in between the time you set, set um, by the philosopher is uh, that's a little bit like mindfulness. You always mm. try to be in the moment and mm. you mm. can just do a project like this project if you are always in the moment. And uh, like, like if you see on the end the whole movie you never can see the 360 hours mm -hmm. possible but you can go in for a moment at least so you you have also this thing of mindfulness that you just arrive in the moment and you you see a part of it and actually the way doing a way like this or each hike also in sao paulo it's always a moment and, uh, if you really want to be there then you have to be in this moment you don't should plan too much ahead or thinking what's in the past you should be there in this moment so mm -hmm. i don't w worth uh, i don't mind if people can't watch the whole path mm -hmm. okay. and it just just so are you are you going to the um conference or or, or not I, I will be there on the conference. Okay, I will stop talking now. We will we will talk a lot when we are there. <laughs> okay. have a lot, we have a lot of crossovers and a lot of um, uh, um, similar things that happened. And uh, I just want to say um, that you must be incredibly grateful to that teacher. I'm de I'm definitely like like this what teacher. A uh, what a brilliant person. To release yeah, like, like, like in, 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 in several ways, because when I, I, I had the idea in to study in art when I was in, in Mexico on the beach, I have no, this was also an idea. I, I don't come out of a uh, family that is connected to the art world, mm -hmm. but I was in Mexico on the beach and I, I, I had the idea I have to study art because perhaps I can show something of these beautiful things. I um, And then I w went to Germany and I applied on the, the art school and the same teacher looked before on my portfolio and he said to me, Daniel, you never can reach the art university with this, um, uh, with these drawings and whatever. Just go out for one year and uh, try to, to figure out what art in our day really means. Like in this time, I knew Picasso mm -hmm. and that's it. <laughs> and and then he said, when you when you figure a little bit more out of it, then you come back and apply again. And on the beginning, it was kind of hard to, it was like completely disappointing to, to have no chance to get into the art school. But he was completely right in this moment. And um, after one year, I had a completely other impression what I want to to study. So, and like this was, uh, he was helping me many times in a way like this. Uh, also with realizing this big project, he always say, go for it. If you like it, even if it's difficult, don't give up. Um, this is, it's always nice to have people on the way uh, they help uh, to uh, bringing you forward with. Okay. I'll see you soon then. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really cur curious of the crossings of your work, whatever you do. Yeah, be, you, you've been warned. <laughs> nice. Exactly. Uh, the the uh, what I the was the, the what what 
this struck me in your work was that the real physical aspect of it that was overcome, that was transformed. Uh, because what you do seems to be extremely simple, slow, uh, so soft, um, uh, suave, like they say. In, 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 it's very, uh, very flowing. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's an immense physical effort. Like you said, you had an a uh, three month uh, I wonder that, that that you could do it away in three month training to, to be able to to start this the slow walking one one year one yeah. year one year, one, so, one year before I started with one hour and then I like the last month I had three hours per day training <laughs> yeah and that's also an, an sometimes underestimated aspect of walking art uh, that eventually we do it with our body and that uh, our body has to go to, to you have to surpass limits, uh, not only uh, physically in space, but as also as well physically with your own body to reach something else, to become something else. So um, that makes it almost musical uh, because a note disappearing to become another note. Um, um, well, what I loved so much about your work is the implicitness of it. It's never explicit. It's never, to my opinion, it's never poetical in the sense that it, or it's only poetical. It, 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 it's, it, it has a beauty in it, but the beauty is always goes always together with a sort of um, reflection weight uh, that uh, um, that confronts you. Uh, that and, and that that is in a certain way subversive. Uh, so. Uh, um, and that uh, is also an aspect of, of, of walking art, and I think Anne will be able to tell us more about that uh, in the next cafe. Uh, uh, that um, as walking artists, we we always are going against uh, as much as we are going with. Um, um, so um, beautiful, uh, uh, Daniel. So this was not really a question, just a thought that I wanted to share. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank, thank you very much, Kurt. Yeah, yeah like, like perhaps it's. There is also always an interest inside what gonna make it with myself when I do a project like this, like like when I meditate uh, 60 days, six hours a day, a day, what gonna change myself? This is my personal experience. I, I think it's not share Apple. It's um, yeah, it's there. It starts to get mystic or uh, uh, spiritual. Uh, somehow, but also like what I told you on the beginning with the Hugo Boss suit, I was really interested what a suit that cost me so much money would do with me if I go to a place. Um, when I was, I was many times before up there in Scandinavia, and when I was there, I could forget even my pin of my cell phone uh, after two weeks. I, I once I was there and I came out from the nature and I wanted to switch on my cell phone and I forgot the number. So I, I know how deep can be this experience in nature. And then I wanted to know what, what's happened to me um, when I when I use this expensive clothes. And in this time with 1000 euros, I could live two months out of it. So it was really a lot of money. And like, I think the curiosity is always a big part of it. What What's going to happen if I go with a sailboat on the street to Patagonia and I drive northwards to the to the civilization? I knew like down there in Patagonia, it's going to be quite simple because there is nobody. But how it will be when there is more police, when there are more cars on the street, uh, when the society will or will stop my my approach, my liberty of an artist being just on the sailing boat, me and the wind and whatever, and what will stop it. So, and like another thing that is always like many people, I'm full of, um, how to say the English word? Like, I believe that I know what's happened and I put things in, like, oh, I see, for example, Jeremy, and he has this glass, and, 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 and I already think that I know who he is. But actually, when I do these projects, I each time confrontated that I know nothing. I don't know what how it will be. I don't know how the persons are. I don't know, like in Argentina, for example, on Patagonia, I 
spend a lot of uh, time to figure out what I can do with the police when they stop the project with the boat because they want to have some money from myself. What's happened in Patagonia was that the peop the police was helping me. They invited me because they were such happy that something happened in Patagonia. Uh, and they invited me for a dinner and the, there was a hill. They, they took the boat behind the car and they pushed me up. So all my worriness about the police in Argentina was completely wrong. And then there happened other things I never thought on. So doing these kinds of projects, I'm getting always, um, they are not planable and there are people I think they could help me and they don't help me and other ones I always expect that they, they don't like it or the, whatever, they help me a lot. So I have to be really open to, to, to yeah, it's a little bit trust in life or whatever and getting away from my, what is the way? Uh, the word for my the the limits like like I think sometimes everything I have to get out of, over it. I don't know. <laughs> I understand? Sorry. I think this is very interesting what you're saying because it's um. I understand that because it, because your your one's brain when one's about to go on one of these journeys is full of stuff which is which you leave behind once you've embarked on the journey and i've had to sort of teach myself it over many years because i'm just an old guy now um it is uh of having my antennae open so like, like an insect so i've got all these antennae going and some of them are sort of picking up interesting vibes and some of them aren't and some of them and then you sort of can i feel i can close some down and then open some others up and and if you're aware of that um all sorts of exciting interesting slow things happen definitely yeah so thank you very much for sharing it. it's really fascinating thank you very much uh, we're going slowly to what's the end of our conversation. Um, does anybody else want to give some comment, feedback, or has a question? Everybody will be on the conference. Uh, the Jess will be there, Anne will be there, um, um, Babak will be there, and of course, uh, Cecilia, you're still welcome if you want to come to Catalonia between uh, 5 and the 9th of July. Uh, please come and join us there to have a real walk together, not only a mind, mind walk, but also a, a beautiful walk in the nature of Catalonia. <coughs> with Daniel, with all of us. And, and Bob, it's the same thing. Bob, uh, welcome to come. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I know that Fred is in uh, Ireland and that uh, the jump to uh, Catalonia will be uh, difficult. But uh, it would be great one day to walk all together. Is that anywhere near Barcelona, Catalonia? No. Uh, Catalonia isn't is indeed uh, Barcelona, Girona. Um, <laughs> I'm planning on going there, okay. <laughs> yeah. Our next cafe will be live from uh, Girona in Catalonia, with um, So. Who, um... Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing all of you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And walking with you. Uh, exactly. That's why we why we go there. <laughs> uh, then, um, then just it leaves me uh, to thank you so much, Daniel, uh, for this uh, beautiful hour. Uh, except, uh, did you have another question, or did you have? An, uh, did you raise your hand, or was it? An uncontrolled movement. <laughs> Good. Then thank you so much, uh, Daniel, for this uh, beautiful hour uh, together. And I'm sure that many more will come once we're in Catalonia. And uh, for the ones that cannot join us, although you're very welcome to do so, uh, the next cafe is on the 5th of July in two weeks. Uh, and Anne will uh, present together with Nathaniel Popkin and other writers um, that uh, work together with her on her 
book about walking stories. Um, um, so we'll discuss the subversiveness and um, the playfulness of uh, words and walking coming together. So um, we will be live in uh, Girona, but online uh, for you all that want to join us uh, via the screen. Thank you for coming today and till next time.